Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here in the Overflow Room. And I'm going to talk to you about what I listened to on my way to the Overflow Room, because this, in case you're listening in the year 2375, is Memorial Day weekend. And the ride from Brooklyn to Connecticut usually takes, oh, about an hour and 10 to an hour and 20 minutes. Except today, it took four and a half hours. Oh, my God. I mean, the roads are just jammed. And especially because, you know, it's after COVID and people are starting to come out again and they haven't gone anywhere. So they're double jammed. But more to the point, they're just jammed. It just sucks. You sit in the car and and you just sit in the car. I mean, that's all you do. You have no options about how you're going to get where you're going to go. You just have to sit and wait and and watch the miles drip by and to help you watch the miles drip by while you're stuck in your car. I have a box set, but it's a very interesting box set, a very unique box set. It's devoted to the work of the Spanish conductor Atolfo Argenta, who died in, in 1958. Very, very tragically, he died of carbon monoxide poisoning which is really kind of unbelievable. He, he was with a student and his apartment was cold. And while they waited for it to warm up, they decided to turn on the car heater in the garage with the door down in 1958. And, you know, the days before catalytic converters and unleaded fuel and whatnot. And he died of carbon monoxide poisoning. It was just horrible. He was in his 40s, his mid 40s. He was an enormously talented conductor. He made his reputation, as many Spanish conductors did initially in the Spanish theater, conducting zarzuelas and other native Spanish music. And of course, he was in much demand for his performances of the Spanish repertoire. But he was very gifted at other things as well. This box contains all of his Decca recordings. They all fit on five CDs, and they're all excellent. They really are. They're very, very good. There's not a weak thing in the batch, and it's a nice selection of repertoire. It's really great if you're stuck in a car for four and a half hours or on a flight or in a train or wherever, ever you're going to be spending a lot of time traveling. It's really, really a good deal. Even more significantly and handily, uh, you can download the whole thing. I have it on my iPhone. So you can start at the beginning. And you know, when you're driving, you do not want to futz with your phone. You want to push go and not have to look at it again till you get where you're going. And this is great for that because these are five very well-filled CDs. And wait till I tell you what the repertoire is. It's really terrific. Get a nice little booklet, although not in the digital version. First, there is, of course, the Spanish album. Very, very nice performances. Let me just say, as a conductor, Argenta was not a pedal to the metal kind of guy. Like many Spanish conductors, there was a certain elegance, a gracefulness, a songfulness and lyricism to his work. He was not a powerhouse kind of guy, but he really knew how to do what he did. And he was not averse to whipping up excitement where the music called for it. So he was a very well-balanced conductor and really enjoyable and natural in the way he approached music making. So, disc number one, you get España, big surprise. A very nice España. And the Rimsky Korsakov, Capriccio Español. And the Granados, Andaluza, Danza Española, number five. The famous, famous one. And then you get Moskovsky's, Moritz Moskovsky's Spanish Dances, book one. This is a wonderful, wonderful rarity. And they are, you know, they're piano originals, but they're charming. An enormous fun to listen to. Kind of like the Slavonic dances, go to Spain, that sort of thing. And it's with the London Symphony Orchestra, recorded in 1957. These are all very good sounding recordings in their day. And the transfers have come up perfectly fine. Some are a little thin sounding, but basically they're all very good. And then last but not least on disc one, you get the Debussy image with the Orchestre de la Suisse Romande. Very, very fine performances. And not just for Iberia. The Iberia is quite well done, as you might expect, but I think the Ronde de Printemps is the real gem of the bunch. It's a beautiful, beautiful performance. Very keenly observed orchestral detailed details with wonderful touches of color and tremendous transparency. And this 
remember, was the Suisse Romande before Ulcer, you know, when Ulcer May was there. This was before Ulcer May's stereo debut image. He'd already done them in mono, and he let Argenta do them, which says something about either he felt that there was going to be any competition or he held him in enormous respect. I think hearing the performances, the latter explanation is probably the accurate one. So disc two, you get the Liszt Piano Concertos 1 and 2 with Julius Katchen and the London Philharmonic. They are wonderful performances. Katchen, of course, was just a barn burner of a pianist. And these are exciting and they make a wonderful contrast with the other stuff that's on the, that's on the disc. Because after that, you get more Spanish stuff. You get Isaac Albaniath Iberia, orchestrated by Arboth. You know, are the, the five, one, two, three, four, five, yeah, five, five movements with the Paris Conservatoire Orchestra, one of my favorites for the fabulously authentic French sound. And boy, do they have a fabulously authentic French sound in these performances. It's just wonderful. So the both list piano concertos in excellent performances with Julius Katchen and a very authentic Iberia. Um, let's see what else we have. Ah, next, the Symphony Fantastique. What could be bad about that? And it's a very good Symphony Fantastique, and it's with the Paris Conservatory Orchestra. And it's probably the best Symphony Fantastique that the Paris Conservatory Orchestra did. It's beautifully, beautifully performed. It's a graceful performance. Again, Argenta was not one to go full bore on the insanity, but he really nails the finale. The finale is fantastic. The, the church bells clang, and the, the tubas and the dies irae have tremendous focus. It's really a fine, fine performance. The first two movements are, are more graceful and lyrical than they are, you know, psychotic, I suppose is the word, but it, it's fine. It's absolutely fine. The tempos are always very natural. The whole piece flows and the playing is really first rate. It, it's a very authentic Symphony Fantastique, a very good performance. It was something Argenta was known for back in the day. And it was a performance that was very highly regarded in the 60s. It seems to have dropped off the Symphony Fantastique map, but it's a shame. It doesn't deserve to. It's quite fine. And then on the same disc, also with the Paris Conservatoire, oh gosh, I love this. Torinas Danzas Fantasticas. I love the Danzas Fantasticas. It's in the Orgia. The last movement makes a great ringtone, an absolutely first-rate ringtone. Try it. You'll see exactly what I mean. But these are excellent performances, just like just like the Symphony Fantastique and Iberia and all the other stuff. Wonderful. Absolutely wonderful by a guy who, who I, I mean, he knew Torina. I mean, he really knew how to do this stuff. Then CD4 is Liszt. You get Les Preludes with the Orchestre de la Suisse Romande, and it's a very very preludial performance. It's very good and very effective, nicely shaped. And with the Paris Conservatory Orchestra, here's a real hoot, a Faust symphony. But it's a Faust symphony with Liszt's orchestral ending without the chorus at the end. Now, if you think that that chorus is just stupid, and frankly, you'd have Probably lots of people agreeing with you. I might be one of them, depending on how it's done. You know, I actually saw it done the way Liszt intended. You know, Liszt, who was desperately trying to tell people to take his music seriously, he writes in the score that, you know, the, the men's chorus has to walk out on stage singing, dressed in white like acolytes, with a, a solemn and serious expression, like they really mean it. I mean, the fact that he had to say that sort of tells you that there might have been a question about the extent to which anybody really meant it. So I saw them do it. The wings came open. These guys walked out, these white robes singing, Arles English, you know. I, I almost died. I was laughing so hard. Maybe it was me. Maybe it was. I just thought it was the silliest looking thing I ever saw in my life. And the opposite of impressive you know, Mahler said the same chorus at the end of the Eighth Symphony. Everybody's already on stage. They don't have to arrive in order to sing it. So there's an argument for doing the piece without the final chorus. 
And uh, it doesn't really matter whether you like it or don't like it. Uh, you just give it a listen and see what you think. It's fun to hear this, and especially played by the Paris Conservatory Orchestra, which was, remember, Liszt's hometown team. So that's really, really fun. And then on disc five, you get the Tchaikovsky Violin Concerto with Alfredo Campoli. I mean, who talks about Alfredo Campoli anymore? But he was a wonderful violinist. And this is a very fine, if traditional, performance. And we conclude with Tchaikovsky's fourth. And again, these are with, one is with uh, the London Symphony, and the Tchaik Four is with the Orchestre de la Suisse Romande. Um, it was recorded in 55 and the Violin Concerto in 56. And again, the sound is quite good. These are these early Decca stereo full frequency recording things. And and they're just they're just fine. Absolutely fine. I mean the Chike 4, you know, the finale is not Mravinsky style. It's not as as pedal to the metal fast, but the scherzo is. The scherzo is a real dazzler in this performance. But the whole thing, like like everything that Argenta does on this disc, has just a a, an effortless effortlessness, there we go, an effortlessness to it that's extremely effective. You, you, don't, you don't have any sense of the music being driven, but you don't have any sense that there's any inhibition at all. It, it all just pours out very, very naturally, which makes it wonderful for listening on the road really, really good for listening on the road. I mean, because the performances are just so, so wonderfully, wonderfully musical. And, and delightful. And if you pay attention to them, there's always something that you can hear that is worthy of your notice. But if you're paying more attention to the traffic or something else is going on, or you're trying to look at your Google map, or, or you're having a snack, or you're just frustrated as hell because you've been stuck in traffic for three hours and you're getting nowhere, this is just the kind of balm for the soul that you're going to need. So if you're on the road, Consider downloading this, or if you have the CDs, you have the CDs, but Atolfo Argenta, a, a, a minor figure in the history of 20th century music, but a major artist, a very, very serious artist whose life was tragically cut short. Decca was about to do a complete Brahms cycle with the Vienna Philharmonic when he passed away in such an untimely manner. And, you know, you just you wish they'd been able to do it. It was sad, but this is worthy of him. It's five very worthy discs of prime music making and a wonderful assortment of repertoire that will, will keep you alert and buzzing and content no matter what's going on around you, no matter how horrendous the traffic is. So that's my suggestion. Keep on listening, folks. Thanks for joining me. Take care.